It's Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button so you get these great interviews. And everybody, if you're wondering, George Lynch is fine, healthy, dandy. He's coming on the show on Monday. Oh, yeah! In three or four days. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get that interview and you don't forget about it. But hey, you're here now. We're here to talk with Rob Weir of Tigers of Pantang. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for uh, having me on the show. Um, I hear you've got George Lynch coming on the show. Uh, tremendous, tremendous guitar player. Lynch Mob, um, I've got to say, is probably one of my favourite uh, favorite bands, uh, particularly uh, Wicked Sensation. Um, that that their, 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 you know, their first album, which they brought out, um, was... It, it, it was on my turntable probably non-stop. Um, I absolutely loved it. Uh, that collection of songs is just brilliant. Um, I've seen, of course, I've seen George with, with Dokken um, many times uh, when they toured the UK. It, never seen uh, Lynch Mob, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm, go I'm going back to, to when they all had big hair and, uh, and uh, <laughs> we, we were all a little bit younger, yes. Um, I remember, remember seeing them at the Newcastle Mayfair uh, and was absolutely blown away by his guitar playing. Um, uh, yeah, that was a that was a good night. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah it'd be very interesting to to hear what he's and of course he's he's got a thriving guitar business as well, which is very interesting. Yes, I'm going to ask him about that, and then I'm definitely going to ask him a a question we talked about not on the air about. Um, I, I don't want to to let the cat out of the bag for the viewers but we talked about um a different instrument being incorporated into the um one of the songs but yeah so i always get the great ones i get um well I, like i said i got george coming i got you i mean i only get the best i mean i only want the best so <laughs> i was of course i was listening to bloodlines um not too long ago we were just talking about this i haven't heard much of tigers of pantang because i'm in canada north america I get inundated with North American music other than, you know, the English, um, you know, um, Titans, uh, Priest, Iron Maiden, um, that sort of thing. But for something, I came across um, Bloodlines streaming on uh, YouTube. And I, I got to tell you, I listened to Vandenberg's album Sin, and I said that was one of the best albums of the year. But I got to tell you, Bloodlines is a, either a close second or it's just up there with number one. Um who did most of the songwriting on this album, uh, Rob? I know you have uh, some some new people in the band. I mean, new as opposed to the originals. You're the original um, member. Um, who did most of the uh, songwriting in the band? Was it you? So, so we all write. Um, when you uh, obviously somebody has to come up with a core idea for everybody else to work on and 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 take it forward and create it. So. Um, Bloodlines um, was uh, kind of crea created the the core of the ideas. Um, I suppose I, I, I demoed what you know what I had in my head um, not long after, well, around lockdown actually, uh, and that's when Francesco Maris, uh, our new um, amazing uh, Italian hotshot guitar player, joined the band. Um, and I sent him, uh, uh, I sent him ideas, um, that, that I'd, that demos that, I, that I'd done. Um, and he kind of deconstructed them and reconstructed them, uh, and, and, you know, met, took them forward and made them, you know, even better, thankfully. Um, and, uh, you know, every, everybody kind of, everybody, everybody does write, but when songwriters, some songwriters claim to write a song, but um, 
do they actually write the bass parts? Do they actually write every single hit of the, hit of the drums? You know, um, so you know, if if I'm coming up with an idea uh, with, with a guitar riff or gu guitar riffs, um, you know, I'll demo it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll program my drum machine very crudely. Um, you know, I'll play the bass on it. If it needs keyboards, you know, I, I can do a little bit of that. Um, but it's it's always I always leave it kind of open ended um, because um, five brains writing a song are much better than one brain in in my book because you've got f you've got five different avenues that the song can be taken down rather than right lads here's the song I want you to play it note for note and that's it and I just think that's not very creative um, and you're not really getting the best out of the fantastic array of talent that you may have. Uh, in the band, which we certainly have in the Tigers. So, you know, um, Hugh, our, our, our new bass player, kind of arrived just in time uh, to play, but unfortunately not to write. Um, but of course, he did write really because he wrote all his bass lines, if, if you kind of get my drift. So, you know, um, I, I didn't write his bass lines for him. You know, he, he was presented with the music, he, he took it off to his studio. Um, you know, played through the songs and came up with some great bass lines. Um, so, you know, in, in my book, that's that, that that's creating and and you know writing the song really. Um, but as I say, somebody initially has to come up with a with an idea for everybody else to to work on. So, um, Francesco and Jack, uh, that's Jacopo Miele, um, our great singer of twenty years. Um, they they wrote a song together, which in fact was the first single, um, which was called "A New Heartbeat," um, yeah, and that's that came that 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 came out before uh, Bloodlines, of course. Um, which was um, we wanted to we wanted to put out a, a, a single. Um, it had two original songs on the the other song, "Red Mist." Um, Francesco and I wrote um, the music. And um, Jack and Craig, uh, who's a um, long-time standing Tigers drummer of 23 years, um, Jack and Craig, th throughout um, all the time that I've worked with them, um, always do the lyrics and the melodies because they're fantastic at it. Um, so, uh, it, it again, you know, it's it's just a it's a band effort really you know uh, um on the on kind of on the b side so we had a we had like had like a double original a side with a new heartbeat um because it came out as a 12 inch um four track single like ep in, in old money um and on the b side originally there was just going to be one one old track and i and i rang francesco because he lives in sardinia and i said to him because he loves Wildcat, and I said, "What's your favorite track of Wildcat?" And he said, "Killers." And I said, "Okay, let's let's do a you know a, a, a version of Killers," uh, which we did. Um, and um, I, I rang our management and I said, "It's a three-track, um, twelve-inch EP. Can it be a four-track?" Uh, and Tom, Tom, our manager said, "It can be." Uh, what, what are you thinking? And I said, "I've got a real burning desire to do Fire Clan mm. as a as a, as a band. We only actually played it probably in maybe 1980, possibly 81. Um, can't remember that far back." Um, and he said, "Yeah, if, if, yeah, I'll, I'll clear it with the record company. I can't see there being a problem." Um, so. Uh, we recorded uh, Fire Cloud as well, um, and it, uh, last year um, we opened the live show with it because uh, it, it it had a hugely popular response uh, with our fans. Uh, so that's um, that, that's it's kind of the process. So I I, I kept sending Francesco song ideas um, demos, uh, and and he kept. Um, re-recording them, uh, making them better, and sending them back and saying, what do you think? And, and everyone he sent back, I went, oh, God, that is so good. Um, the, 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 before we started this interview, you, you, you muted to me that you had three favourite tracks, um, one of which I think you said was A New Heartbeat. 
Um, the second one you said, making all the rules. Um, yeah. Actually, Craig Craig actually is completely responsible for that. Uh, he wrote the, the music um, and uh, the lyrics um, and the melody. Um, and um, with a little help from Francesco, just sort of shaping it. Um, and that's a that was a it's a great song. Um, yeah. Not maybe not a song that you would expect an album to finish with, but it, actually it's a masterpiece. Um, it it, it's, and and uh, apps, the lyrical content is just tremendous. It, it's very it's very current um, of 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 the, of the youth of today. Um, I think. Um, and the third, your, your, your third choice, um, Taste of Love, which was Taste of Love, the, 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 the kind of like the, the, the power ballad, if you like. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I kind of write a, a, a power ballad about once every five years. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not really what, no, maybe even longer. It's not really what, really kind of what I'm, what I do, uh, what I'm known for. Um, but, um, I think, if you're going to write a song like that, it's got to be a belter um, because yeah. there's, you know, um, the critics tend to pick up on, 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 on ballads. If, if they're not good, um, they just say, did the album need that? Cause, and that, that basically means they don't like it. Um, and again, that's had a massive response. And when I, when I came up with, with, with the initial idea um, of that, um, I, I I rang Jack up. Um, Jack lives in Florence, and I said, "Jack, um, have you got a friend who can take who can take my guitar uh, off the front of, of 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 the song and replace it with piano?" And Jack said, "Yeah, yeah, we can do that." Uh, and that's exactly what he did. He he got one of his um, fantastic uh, Italian musicians that he works with, um, and. Um, you know that, that that's why it's got piano on it um and there's absolutely no reason why although we don't have a piano player in the band of course but there's no reason why you can't have uh you know piano on a song um right or, or you know on, on a hard rock song um but i think it works incredibly well and again that, that, that that's another amazing lyric uh and, and and melody as well um take a look at yourself um, you know, do, do you like who you see? Uh, it, it is quite, uh, you know, thought um, uh, um, provoking. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's that's kind of how the songwriting process goes, and 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 will you know, and and will continue. <laughs> awesome. You said you said a whole bunch of things I'd like to allude to. First of all, kids, go down to the description box after the interview because I. Uh, Originally, um, did like um, um, a little um, video where I said basically it was like, guess who this uh, rock song? Guess guess who's playing this great tune? And it's Taste of Love, and you would you wouldn't know it until you started listening to, and clicked on the YouTube link. So I have that in the description box. Check that out. It's such a great song. Um, we we're talking about you said um, to end an album with um, making all the rules is um, kind of an interesting choice to have it at the end and i thought well hmm. if you look at um i always try to bring in different things i don't know i'm just quirky that way but if you're in a mall complex in north america you have a mall where you have an anchor at one end like a walmart and then another anchor at the other end of the mall is like a, like hmm. i don't know a costco or a sears you have that and that's you need those or it's not going to work so i think you putting a great song at the end, a great song at the beginning, and all the other great songs in the middle is just um, dynamite. Um, and so dynamite that Bloodlines, I think it's almost at 30,000 streams already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's probably a bit more than that. Yeah. It's, it's done. It's done extremely well. Um, and our press office, um, Fernando, uh, who, who runs the press office, um, I can't remember ever having as many reviews of the of, of the album um, there's like well that. over well over a hundred uh reviews from 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 all around the world um of people um you know that have wanted that that have asked to review it um that have wanted to review it and and that's you know that that's just 
incredible, really. I, I, I can't remember us having that many reviews, you know, back in back in the day, as they say, you know, when we were signed to MCA, um, you know, um, 79, 80, 81. Yeah, you're with Mighty Music now, which is obviously picking great talent. And I hear great things about Fernando. I'm going to be getting mm. with you, Fernando. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can make that happen. He's, uh, he, he's a good boy. Yeah, and I just want to thank you in advance for that guitar lick that uh, you'd sent me. So that's great. The viewers obviously love that. Now, coming up with shows, you've got a couple of shows left this year, but then you're going to be on my side of the pond in the new year at the 70,000 Tons of Metal. How how cool is that? Yeah, that's just uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, it's uh, We fly out to Miami, I think, on the 27th of January. Um not that we're all excited and got our cases packed. Um, we have. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we arrive. I think I think we arrive about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and then the next day we'll jump on this massive cruise ship. Um, it's the 60 bands. Um, every band plays. And, and we set sail down to the Caribbean. And every band plays once on the way down. Um, it's two, two days to sail down. Uh, I think we get a day there, and uh, and then every band plays again. Um, but, you know, two days to sail back. So uh, it's it's going to be absolutely tremendous, absolutely awesome. And then you're going into the studio uh, later in the year for another album. Um, I'm going to retouch. Well, we're, 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 yeah, we're right. We'll 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 be, we'll be um, we're right. We, we write constantly, but that's but it's it'll be a more concerted effort to to produce demos. Um, to send to, to send to our record producer because we, we we'll actually be recording the next album. Uh, we'll that, that'll be twenty twenty five. Okay, perfect. Well, it gives you time to tour and uh, tour on the on Bloodlines. I mean, everybody's yeah, going to see you guys live. That that, that, um, need, that needs to be done. Yeah. Before I forget, I mean, I'm, I I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> but I mean, um, it it dawned on me you let the cat out of the bag. Now you were saying that Huey or Hugh, um, mm -hmm. you kind of figure he did write some of the material. So is he going to get royalties now? <laughs> uh, um, I'm bugging, uh, I'm bugging, Rob. Well, we, we, we might buy him a couple of um, cherry brandies, but, you know, he's... Um, buy him a... you, 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 you've, you've got to keep, you've got to keep, you know, you've got to keep talents, you know, where, where, where it needs to be. Keep him happy, yeah. I mean, just um, if you're a fan of The Simpsons, um, buy him a flaming Moser or a Duff. A Duff, yeah. Hey, I'm sure he'd be very pleased with that. Yes. <laughs> um. So going on the two, on the seventy thousand uh, cruise, what bands? Um, and, and I'm sure you've looked over the lineup. What bands are you interested in seeing yourself when you guys are there? Um, I've. I'm, I'm I'm very open to to to, to, to watching anything really, um, particularly if I've got a Jack Daniels in my hand. Um, <laughs> and if anybody if anybody's watching this that's going on the cruise, um, f feel free to uh, to buy me one. That, that would be very uh, very generous. Um, <laughs> well, us musicians are all, us musicians are all poor, you know. Um, we, we always plead poverty. <laughs> well, I mean, these days it's harder to make a buck in the industry, and it just shows how oh. dedicated you guys are to your um, sport, for a better word, your art. Because back in the day, yeah, it's... people have to now. Now people can just basically it's it's, it's stealing, and you're not. And 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 I think it's true. And I'm going to ask you. You know. Right now, you're not making money as much on record sales as you do from merch and from touring. Am I correct on that? That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and although streaming, you know, is the way forward and entirely necessary, um, bands get paid an absolute pittance. Unless you're. So, um, uh, um, I, I read. I, I read. Uh, Corey Taylor had had a bit of a meltdown last year, I think, um, uh, with regard to Slipknot, uh, and, and he said on social media, for every million downloads, uh, you know, of Slipknot get, um, it's worth four hundred dollars to them. Wow! I didn't know it was that low. Yeah, it's something like zero point zero zero eight um, pence um per per stream or whatever it's just well and, and I'm, I'm i guess that's why all the streaming companies are um fairly rich 
Yeah, I mean, unless you're um, who is it? Taylor Swift. I mean, mm -hmm. well, she's making billions on pro probably hundreds and hundreds of millions touring, but yeah, she can probably make a decent living just from the streams, but yeah, yeah it's tough. So, yeah. do you enjoy touring? Is it that? Um, I mean, no, um, as we get on in age, myself included, you know, you kind of want to relax and stuff. There's some people, I mean, holy geez, I don't know when Steve Harris of Iron Maiden stops. Same thing with uh, Viv Campbell. Uh, I don't know when they stop. He's either in Leopard touring, takes a couple seconds off, and then he's uh, back on the road with Last in Line. Do you still enjoy the touring as much in the travel, or is it you like the touring, you yeah. like the fans, but the travel, it's. No, don't mind the travel. Don't mind. I, I love it all. Uh, and I feel quite um, um, privileged and blessed still to be able, you know, to, to, to be able to do it and for, for the band to be as, you know, still as successful as, as it is. Um, that's, and, and that's, that's down to obviously, you know, these wonderful people um, coming out, you know, and spending their money. What I, what I really, really gripes me and, and, and I disagree with is um, bigger bands um, that um, have decided they want to charge their fans a premium um, to, you know, so, so you buy your ticket for whatever money um, and then you get offered, you know, this 20-minute um, window, um, with you know, with, with a load of other people um, to, you know, meet the band and... Um, I, I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it gets you, but it but it can amount to hundreds and hundreds, of course, of of, of pounds or dollars. Yeah. Um, and I I just think that's inherently wrong, because a a these big bands do they really need all, all, all that you know, all that extra money? If you're gonna be honest and true to your fans and reward them, then why don't you do it for free before the show? Yeah. Why why why, why don't you have a you know have a draw and, and invite 200 lucky people for, for half an hour to a sound check or something or, or you know and 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 do it do it nicely like that rather than invite them and say that's another 500 dollars thanks very much yeah pull I, up Jimmy hagar where you get 200 fans they pull them out of the hat and then they can stand behind uh where the drummer and everything and watch the show you know like this i mean that that was that was brilliant when sammy did that I, I just think that you do good stuff like that don't because at the end of the day who's put these bands the you know you know these big bands in this privileged position it's the fans yeah but by, by buying the product so so why 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 Ouch. rip them off and, and and take more money off them it, it just it, it it just doesn't add up to me it's wrong and and a huge a huge part of 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 um the the tigers um mindset um is after the show is is meeting people and and, and talking to people and finding out how they take and you know uh, making sure everybody's okay mm -hmm. well i'll be the devil's advocate because i do agree with you 100 percent what you're saying but i'm looking at things in, in certain ways i remember when um the c19 bullshit happened um a lot of the interviews i would do with the like i forget who it was it was it was i don't know it was david coverdale or somebody anyways they said that the, the real problem is um, that they're sufficient with their royalties and they can make their good living. I don't know if it was David or not, but they said the fact is they feel bad for the people they employ. Like they employ 30 people from the roadies to the techs. They employ, I think maybe it was Def Leppard or I mean, they employ all these people, like 70, 50, 80, 80 people. And he says, those are the ones that we feel bad for when we can't tour because of this, you know, this thing that happened in 2019 and went on and that's feeling bad so what i'm trying to digress to <laughs> i always had a long-winded sentence i should have been an author but i think a lot of these bands maybe i could be wrong aren't doing this because they want to but maybe it's their their agent wants to make more bucks for themselves and that sort of thing because if you look at, are you are you into sports are you a, a fan of sports rob mm -hmm. okay so yeah Look, take this for instance. You've got um, I mean Canada, so hockey's the um the primary sport. You got a hockey player that's worth um four million dollars, and then you see things where they're not going to negotiate. They want seven million, and and the average person like me, 
uh, would say, you know what? what's wrong with you people? You're you're greedy, like this is disgusting. And then you kind of find out through the back door that the agent is kind of egging them on and saying, oh, they're treating you like shit. Oh, they don't think you're worth that. And it's because the agent's getting another quarter of a million dollars if he can get another two million dollars onto that so maybe that's the same thing with these bands doing this extra fee it's they'd rather not do it but they're following direction from management i, I don't know do, am i on anything or am i just a loose cannon here <laughs> mm, uh, 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 i think if <laughs> okay so how i would answer that is um the band um would employ the manager the band would employ uh the agent so Enough, yeah who who's the boss yeah that's a good point so so, so, so the band just roll over and go yeah okay yeah yeah if, if you want a bit more money then then we'll help you get it that's absolute rubbish it's that's yeah, okay. just not the, the, so somebody should have some balls to stand up and say hang on a second here no you know you you, you get your percentage from us you know, you know whatever that's that, that's that's how it is and it's because of all these lovely people that you know could spend their money on any band you know on any night but they've chosen to spend it on us then you know let's let, let's let's play the game and be fair that's right. that, that's the way i feel well i think you're very accurate and i think you're very um you're on to it so no, that's I, I i truly appreciate your perspective um before i let you go um just mm -hmm. wanted to ask you favorite canadian band Past, present, or future? Well, yes, I can't say future. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, do you know, um, Brian Adams is is. Uh, I've always thought that, that that guy is just oozing with talent. Um, great rock voice. Um, I put, do you know my, one of my favorite? Um, I mean, I, I like Run to You and all that kind of stuff. But I, my my kind of favorite album is uh, is when he had that association with Mutt Lang. Uh, and it, it, it's a double, it's a double live album, and I've actually, I've actually got it in my. Um, it's called. I'll, I'll just one second. It yeah. is called. Um, it is called Waking Up the Neighbors. Yeah, Waking um, Up the Neighbors. Well, Mutt Lang, what, he, what a talent he, he is, right? Look what he's done. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Every genre he, of music. He almost turned Brian Adams into Def Leppard. Almost. What? Um, but it, but it's still well. Yeah, if you listen to the album, it's it, it's. You know, he, he kind of has the, 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 the leopard drum sound and um, uh, that kind of sort of vocal sort of thing that, that, that he uh, that, that he sort of invented with them. Um, but it, it's it's sound, but it's it's Brian's Brian's songwriting, of course. So it's it's great. Uh, and the album rocks like a like like a mother. It, it's really really good. I like. I it. thought you said Mutt almost got Brian into Def Leppard. I'm like, what? Here's blabber no, no. Uh, gossip. No, 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 no. They're just, just the production style. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, and look, I mean, just to stay out of mud a bit. Um, another Canadian, um, well, Mutt kind of reformed the country industry with what he did with Shania Twain. Another Canadian. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Where, where I, now, maybe you can answer this. Um, or, or maybe fastest fingers first. Maybe the, the listeners can can Google it as well. When we were signed to MCA, they had a great a, a great band called Trooper. Oh yeah, Trooper, Flying Colors, um, Boys in the Bright White Sports Car, Santa Maria. Were they Canadian? Raise a little hell. They certainly are Canadian. That's yeah. So so so, so that 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 would be my my kind of second. Is second fiddle, if you like. Uh, Raise a little hell. That was a great song. I love that. If you don't like what you got, why don't you? Yeah, Trooper's great. Um, they're still doing shows. Um, I'm going to try to get. Oh, they really? Of, um, the yeah. Trooper and try so, to get Go ahead. There's a bit of a blast. Bit of a blast from the past, and I think yeah. there was. Again, I think. Um, was what was there was a Canadian? Were they called Wabbit? With a W. I'm, I'm, I had an had an album by them. They were in Looney yeah, Tunes, a... wasn't that a bunny? And, <laughs> it was, yes. But I, I think there was a band called Wabbit. Um, Wabbit. Wabbit, yes. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, um, I'm, uh, oh god, I used to have I used to have the album as well, the LP. Um, 
anyway uh, 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 yes i'll, I'll uh, find sure. uh, even if they're not canadian i'll put it on the uh on the screen here when i um edit this and um yeah so uh last question my friend um Ooh, what is the yeah. opposite of unsubscribe the opposite the opposite of unsubscribed is to subscribe Everybody do is this great legend in England and around the world with Tigers of Pantang. What a great name. I just actually looked that up and um, something to do with, um, was it a book? Pantang was it a was. It, it was. Well, the, the, the book was a series of books written by Michael Moorcock, who was quite right. a famous fantasy, fantasy science fiction writer in the 70s. Uh, and the book where Arne came from was, was the book was called Stormbringer. Um and the main character in it was a sword wielding um, half man, half wizard called Eldrich, Eldrich, Eldrich. I, I can't even say it. And he had a magical sword, and and, and so it goes on. It's um, El, El, Eldrich of Ulborn or something. I, I can't quite remember. Um, I probably got that pro pronounced it all entirely wrong. Um, and the reason how the name very quickly how the name came about um when i started the tigers i put an advert in, in a local newspaper mm -hmm. uh, and the yeah. and the advert said something like um guitar player looking for you know like-minded musicians to start uh, an original band uh, and play songs of the day um and within about two hours i got a phone call um one of those where those lovely old phones in those days were the, where you used to dial the button. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I was at home and, and, and my mum shouts, uh, there's, a, there's a call for you. So I, I said, hello. And, and this voice said, hello, uh, are you looking for uh, um, band members? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, he said, I, I play bass. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm at college. Yeah. Um, and I said, oh, right. I said, you know, so, so we had a bit of chat and found out that he lived about half, about half a kilometre away from me. Um, and he said, the course that I'm on, um, there's a lad who plays drums. Uh, I, would that be of, of a help? And I said, absolutely. So it kind of went on from there. We had a church hall, had a bit of a jam. I said, I've got, I've got some of these, I've got a pile of songs I've been writing. What do you think? So we ended up sort of, you know, playing those as well as songs of the day. Uh, and, and that's kind of how it started. Um, and we were sat in... Uh, in Rocky's mum's um, living room, uh, trying to think of a name for this mm. little ensemble that, uh, ensemble that we had. So um, we, there was only two names in the hat because it was just just me and Rocky there, and I, and I said Achilles' heel, um, and he said Tigers of Pantang. Wow. <laughs> and I said, "Wow!" I said, "What?" I said, "What?" He says Tigers of Pantang, and I said, "Oh my God, where have you got that from? That's that that's it. That's that's." We, you, we won't get any better and he said well i'm busy reading this book called stormbringer um and uh, along the storyline of the book in the, the plot of the book um there's this emperor um and to get into his principality you have to pass through the cliffs of pantang hmm. and they're, gu they're guarded by attack tigers so he said i've just put the elements together and came up with tigers of pantang i said that's that's a brilliant um and he said um why don't we instead of the i we'll have a y just gonna um, have so yes so so I, so I said even better and in fact the original name had um i think above the above the a's it had the, like two dots that uh, uh, again i can't think what what the umblings or something like that they're yeah, called yeah motley like, crew had that um the, the, o, 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 over the years they, they disappeared but uh, what did come out of it was um, sort of 78, uh, early 78, late 70, late 77, early 78. There weren't many bands that had backdrops. And Rocky's mum got a um, a white bed sheet um, and dyed it black for us. And we went out and we bought some yellow sticky back plastic. Mm -hmm. And we drew, uh, well, she drew. Um, all, all the letters, Tigers of Pantang, cut them all out and stuck them on this black bed sheet, and that became our first backdrop. Yeah, that's amazing because these days um, the kids can got a photograph of it. <laughs> talk to their phone and says, "This is what I want." Plus, stop at McDonald's and get me a Big Mac. <laughs> it's there. 
<laughs> so, anyways, do as Rob Weir says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. And uh, wow, absolutely uh, great! I'm going to put the links below for um, the website and um, where the, everybody can go and check out where you guys are playing. Get your merch, uh, Mighty Music. I'm going to put that down there as well as um, yeah, the links and check out this album. Bloodlines is like definitely. It's I've heard about thirty albums this year, um, new ones, and I tell you, I've been, Vandenberg Sin is great, but this this one is just as great. I mean, you got to check it out if you're into eighties hard rock, guys. Check this out. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much indeed.